This is me. I'm 169 centimeters tall, I weigh 61 kgs, and I have horrible eyesight. This is Hafthor Bjornsson, who plays the mountain on Game of Thrones. Hafthor is 210 centimeters tall, weighs 180 kgs, and could probably eat me for breakfast. If you take any two given people, it would appear the genetic variety in humans is incredibly vast, but surprisingly, it doesn't differ as much as you'd think. Human DNA is made up of around 3 billion bits of code. It's a vast amount of data. One TED Talk presenter made that figure more impressive by wheeling out three bookshelves filled with 175 volumes of tiny print books, consisting of 275,000 pages. These volumes contained the first fully sequenced human genetic code. Perhaps the more interesting fact is that what separates you from me, or me from Hafthor Bjornsson, is the data contained on just 500 of those 275,000 pages. Much of the rest is currently a mystery. Human DNA sequencing has come a long way in a very short time. 17 years ago, the project that produced the first sequence code cost about $100 million. Today, you can have your DNA sequenced for under a thousand bucks. In 2012, the scientific community had another major breakthrough. A technology called CRISPR allowed scientists to accurately and affordably cut and paste bits of information within DNA. A procedure that used to be reserved for huge budget projects can now be quickly replicated by students in a good bio lab. The ability to selectively apply genetic traits in humans is fast approaching. Soon, parents will be able to edit eye color or physical fortitude among countless other traits, as well as completely screen out disease or imperfections. As the world approaches this massive change, it would be wise to consider some of the possible consequences. As with any new technology, there are inherent risks. When editing human DNA, geneticists will have to have the utmost care for the underlying system. Much of those 275,000 pages of data are simply filled with long stretches of the letter N. Those passages represent bits of code that the technology of the day couldn't decipher. At first, it will be like a computer science student playing around with existing code. Whatever changes he makes may have unintended consequences, and will probably not be for the best. As the technology becomes more mainstream, it will become more available to the average individual. What happens when young parents can't afford to edit negative traits out of the child they're expecting? Less scrupulous gray market geneticists could offer reduced rates with lower standards, possibly introducing unforeseen genetic problems into their customers. Many experts believe that the best way to combat that kind of situation is to prevent individual labs and governments from controlling the growth of the market, like the way GMOs have developed. If this new technology is nurtured in a public, collaborative environment led by genetic experts, the outcome could be much more positive. Genetic tinkering needs to be developed in a controlled, humanitarian manner to avoid the fate that's befallen GMOs, which are now often referred to as frankenfoods and have a negative connotation when they could realistically help end world hunger. One facet of humanity that must be respected is diversity. Diversity has gotten the human race through some very challenging times and is absolutely essential to any evolving system. Take for example, your average city. Most successful cities are home to a variety of different businesses. You've got your grocery stores, your coffee shops, and your retail outlets, among others. Some of those businesses will fail, and some will flourish, as they always do. The more diversity you have in your city, the better off you'll be. It's the difference between having a bad year and losing one barbershop among 10 diverse stores, or nine barbershops among 10 similar stores. The same is true among humans. If generations in the future become more homogenous, we'll be more susceptible to disease and genetic conditions that could cause massive societal damage. Genetic engineering also raises questions of parenting, and of the essence of life itself. When this technology becomes mainstream, will it be a parent's obligation to have her child modified? Most people would agree that screening out the predisposition for alcoholism or Alzheimer's would be a good choice, but where should we stop? Eliminate blindness? Sure. What about a standard height for males, or a standard weight for females? What skin color is the most desirable? Do we want a race of super athletes, musicians, professional bowlers? The temptation of making a designer baby will be very real. And maybe that's okay, but you have to think, at what point does the child stop being itself and become a product of prepackaged super genes? Then again, is that all we are in the first place? Minds stuck in more or less randomly generated strings of data. Are we individuals, or are we just the inevitable end result of our genetic code? Perhaps in the coming years, scientists will be able to shed more light on those lines of ends and unravel the mystery hidden in our DNA. Maybe the next generation of children will be beautiful, brilliant, six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyed, professional bowlers. As this technology develops, and we are still a good way off from seeing modified embryos brought to term, it's important to keep in mind that there's no such thing as a perfect human being. Genetic traits necessitate trade-offs. You wouldn't see a six-foot-tall jockey, or a four-and-a-half-foot-tall strongman. Perceived imperfections are what make us unique, and define us as a species. So, look forward to destroying blindness, muscular disorders, Alzheimer's, and countless other blights. And remember that your DNA is just as special as Hafthor Bjornsson's. And almost as special as mine.
As always, my videos are intended to spark your curiosity on the subjects I present. If you're interested in learning more about genetic engineering, check out the links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel by clicking here. Your support really does make all the difference. Leave a like or a comment down below and share your thoughts on what the future of humanity will look like. You can check out my last video by clicking here or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.